Good morning. If I could give a piece of advice to the people starting out in lawn service, I would say um, find a mower that fits you and then find the lawns that fit that mower. And then it's all rinse and repeat, a matter of establishing processes, curating a set of procedural safeguards, uh, and then the repeatability, once you do it in that way, is enhanced because then that mower platform, you can buy redundancy. And then next, I would learn that mower like nobody's business so that you know things that are wrong with it before the breakage. And you can notice when there's a skip on the hydros and know if it's paired to both sides, so it might be the belt. Uh, just little nuanced things that you'll just acclimate to when you run in same machine, same machine, same machine. You can you can try to accommodate people and get two different size mowers and things like that. But from my long experience, that's a flex to show that, you know, I can dominate this market here or this region or this set of lawns. But is it really worth it? Because now you've got to buy a second machine of redundancy. And when we have parts issues, then, you know, you have less of the rinse and repeat probability of being able to provide service to those customers you have more of a demand on yourself and your business and in the day-to-day -day, for the one or two lawns that you need that narrower mower you got to either tote it and have a bigger rig and have lose the efficiency there or you're uh, it's going to be in the way a few times uh, it's going to be in your garage take storage space and if it's a different brand and breed altogether, then it's a whole nother parts uh, set that you'd have to have to support that machine so that you can stay there and for your customer. And a good example is I picked up this lawn over here because this guy, I loosely call him organizer over here. He, he uh, tried to start setting me up with everybody, everybody. Well, I, in the moment I, I forgot an old lesson that I'd learned and I thought, well, I'll bring the 60 over. His gate was too small. I'm going to actually zero his his uh, entire year's worth of mowing invoice balance because I haven't been able to get back over here. I got too busy with the 60 to cut the back. And to me, he depended on me to mow it through the year and everything. And half a service is not a service. So he gets zero balance. That And I want that to be that way. I haven't even been recording the service events because I have no intention of taking payment on that lawn for the entire year. And I want that hit. I want that to be a lesson I never forget next time. So the higher the consequence, the higher probability of retention of that perspective. And uh, then another factor is if you fall to the, the organization mindset of some people who, you know, they want to discount because they got you all these other yards then there's going to be a few like this one she wanted to cut real low and it was below my procedural safeguards and below my values on uh environmentally um so then that one didn't work out and then the feedback loops from those negative experiences doesn't really bode well for longevity and word of mouth uh market share so or both, so you, so that's another factor. If you let that guy down because you can't get both mowers over here for whatever reason, then he's pissed and that word of mouth travels. But when you set your mower up like this, where you have your equipment on board and the way I've done it in general, um, I'm better off dropping ramps at each lawn and not having these sets. It's less impactful for me physically and it preserves this disconnect. I was a landlord for a long time and the worst experience that I had was on these door-by-door -door tenancies on an apartment complex. The, the talk back and forth and the comparisons and stuff. And that happened here. She was like, well, you mowed his lower, blah, blah, blah. You know, there are certain circumstances that are beyond the information set of most lawn customers. So, all in all, I find it better to set yourself up where you don't need those sets. The inefficiency you have there uh, isn't worth it. If you mow them all and then you go do your stick line, you're going to be parked and you're going to have deadheading a lot. 
when you have it on board, you park the mower where you want to start your stick route and that's the most efficient. And you're not waiting for your stick man to get out of the way or what your stick man's not waiting for you to get your pass done and the blower guy's not waiting for both of you to do your thing. It's just a fluid movement and you stay in the equipment operator mindset because there's no disruption of that. If you can train your customers not to come out and blah, blah, blah. All right, y'all have a good day.